I am gonna have to fix this in post, aren't I? <laughs> or, or you just or or not. Again. Or, or you could just you could save just the line and start and again. And this line. time, let us know that you're starting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm hitting play right now. <laughs> Doing a lot of shit. Awesome. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 219 for the 11th of July, 2019. My name is Kent. With me, as always, is Amos and our guest, Richard Gunther. Hello! I just realized I forgot to say the. this is the show where... What is it, Amos? This is a short two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. Yeah, exactly. You know, right. Damn it, he just conned me into saying it for him. It would cute. not be an episode of Ritual Misery if the opening went right. I mean, come on, let's be serious about there, No, there's a couple that have. They, they were just grossly off time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how I mean, is that it, right? It wouldn't be an episode of Ritual Misery if we were both on time and okay. the intro correct. That would be fraud. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's, that, like, that, that's how you see the counterfeit bill. That, right that's here. part of the the actually that's part of the ritual part and the misery part. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, you're yeah. not wrong. All right, Kent. Uh, hey, uh, uh, I'm in DC. I'm here with Richard at his place. Well, we're not in DC. We're like on the outskirts. We're of outside DC. of DC. It's, it's nice here. It's you're not, like it's four hours sweet. outside of DC, which I guess is still part of the DC metro. We're more like 25 minutes outside of the D.C. boundary, but whatever. <laughs> well, it, that really depends on when you leave, though. That totally depends on when you leave. <laughs> and the weather. It's been raining and storming the entire yeah. week, like off and on, like, you know, when you don't want it to. Yeah, yeah I've, I've been about five miles away from the capital, and it took me about two hours to get to it. So, yeah, I mean. That's, that is not That's inaccurate. D.C. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, so, uh, you're in D.C., Amos, and that's, uh, as part of your internship, is that right? Yeah, 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 I'm here, uh, with, with Jenny Justison for Infinite Game. Uh, we produced a series of po- live show podcasts this week for, for, uh, Talking Feds. And, I don't know, how'd you think you went, Richard? You, you got to see one of them. Yeah, I went yesterday, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, doing a live show is nerve-wracking as hell, and... I think you and Jenny and I already Crystal forget Chris, the name of um, uh, Crystal had. Columbus. Okay. okay, what the three of you were just like on top of it. Everything was ready. Everything went really smoothly. And you know, for the for for what it's worth, you have a podcast host who kind of likes to like occasionally do things on the fly. So they show up on fly. Like considering <laughs> everything that was thrown at you. It was amazing how well it went, and it was a lot of fun. I wanted to go today as well, because today... Today was nuts so. Today, they actually had an episode that C-SPAN came and covered live. Yeah. That so is C-SPAN amazing. TV, yeah, C-SPAN TV is going to carry it later. I don't know if it's aired on C-SPAN. It is available on the C-SPAN website already. Yeah, and, and the audio was live. Audio and the audio live. was live, yeah. yeah. And it'll be on C-SPAN TV at some point, but we don't know when. So, and, the, and the kicker for the audio was they actually tapped into the audio I had already set up. So what you heard is what we were literally putting out, which is really awesome. So so to catch up people that, that haven't been following uh, us lately, uh, explain briefly what, what is Talking Feds, Amos. Talking, well, why don't you explain, Richard, because you're a listener but not actually part of the production. Because I'm slightly skewed, so. Uh, so I'm, I'm the unbiased opinion, Okay. So Talking Feds is a podcast produced by and with a roundtable of former federal prosecutors or district attorneys or assistant district attorneys. And they are all having a discussion each week, sometimes more often, if urgent news comes up about the current political stuff, whatever that might be. So, you know, it's usually uh, Trump, but it's usually Trump related because but that's the always. current administration. Right. And lately, the news of interest has been Mueller related. And when the Mueller report was out, they had people on one of my favorite episodes, actually, was an episode with people who had previously worked with Mueller, know how this man thinks, know how, how he works. 
and we're talking about you know what they could anticipate out of the report and what it probably would and wouldn't provide yeah. and they were fairly close i mean i think Mueller threw everybody a, a couple curveballs yeah. but but um you know the insight that these folks have is fascinating and i'm just a complete political news junkie and i'm sitting in front of political news shows most every evening. So to actually be able to watch the faces that I'm used to seeing as guests on MSNBC, CNN and yeah. MSNBC and other shows, just there talking live, like it's all I could do to keep myself from jumping into the conversation. Yeah, and and it's, it's typically more of a liberal podcast because most of the guests are fairly liberal biased. Um, but what it really comes down to is they all have a very delicate appreciation for the Constitution, for constitutional law, and for the, all the aspects, that, the objective aspects of why we have a Constitution and then how to maintain it and why certain things about this administration aren't necessarily going with the, the, with the common understanding of how the Constitution should, should be upheld. Um, and then yesterday, the panel we had yesterday was actually uh, three Republicans on the show, was that the one you, you watched? Yeah, it? yeah, it was a panelist of Republicans who, who are actively trying to figure out how to address the fact that the current Republican candidate who's in office is not working in the interest of the Republican Party. And well, and the, even the, the Republican Party isn't working in the interest of the Constitution. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's very interesting, and if you're into con law or into um, uh, the current political environment and you're not exactly happy about it, it's probably a really good show to listen to because it gives you the good side and the bad side. It, it provides you the hope and the, the dread of mm -hmm. what we're actually going through um, a, as a country. So it, it's right. really good. With, and with, one with, more thing as reason to go check it out on C-SPAN is today's big guest, which so, was kind of a, a last minute. Some, somewhat surprised. Last minute surprise. It got so confirmed um, yesterday afternoon. Was... Andrew McCabe, the former acting uh, director mm -hmm. of the FBI. Yeah, the one that replaced Comey when Comey got fired, and then subsequently got fired 26 hours before his pension would have taken effect. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and he was, first of all, he's a good-looking dude. Second of all, he's really <laughs> smart. Yeah, he knows his shit. Yeah, and I mean, he's, 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 he was an awesome guest. He kind of commanded awesome the room. Job. He, he, and I was walking around the room trying to take pictures, right? You know, because that's what I do. I, I set up the audio, and then the 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 PA would would actually listen to audio while we were recording. And I would go around and get pictures for publications and things like that. Every time I aimed the camera at him, he looked me like dead in the lens. <laughs> and like he he like he looked. It was like. It was weird. <laughs> so he, so he had that he he has that Washington D.C. like you know the, the like a, a a federal employee should right like like oh there's a camera okay and I'm back to talking no you know, like, no 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 this is more like you know when you're watching a movie and there's that elite FBI agent that knows the, the license plate number of every car that passed by in the last ten minutes <laughs> okay he had more of that appeal oh so like yeah, super it, cop. He was super right, like he is in charge of the room. That is, yeah, like, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it, it was it was nuts. It was great. Cool. It was it, so yeah. It, cool week. Cool week. That was probably a longer explanation of what Talking Ted's was than you were expected. Yeah, but no, you answered all my questions. I had questions in my mind, and then every time I thought about it, you guys just automatically answered it because my immediate follow up was going to be Amos. What is your role? And then you explained it. So. Um, it's because yeah. we're fucking professionals, that's why. I, I mean, it's, yeah, like, you, it's the, like you guys have podcasted it, before. Right, right, right. Uh, despite the dignation kind of set we have going on here today, uh, right, yeah. we, we do know how to do this. Ken didn't know about dignation, though. It, it predates his I mean, I've right? been to dignation parties in Austin, <laughs> if that counts. <laughs> Oh my gosh! So my week hasn't been nearly as exciting. I've I've spent a lot of time in the garage working on my Jeep Cherokee. That fucking thing is still broken. Um, but I've I've got a a particular. Uh, wait, wait 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 wait. What have you fixed? Well, wait a minute. I I want to rewind from there. How did you break your Jeep? Well, first of all, it's a Jeep. Well, okay. So it's a Jeep that that was. 
that was uh, re- released or manufactured in 1996. So it's a 97 Jeep Cherokee. Mm-hmm. And it's had, I think, I think I'm the third owner of it. And it's had very little, like it's had no upgrades at all and very little maintenance over the years. So I kind of mm-hmm. inherited, I don't want to say a lemon, but, you know, a, a well-loved vehicle. Let's call it yes. that. Yes. And uh, so, I mean, it's just things that pop up, right? So Jeep Cherokees, especially in that in that year range that, that the 97 models fall into, uh, there's there's a lot of electrical problems. So a few weeks back, actually probably about a month ago, Oh, I, I talked yes, about I doing some about electrical this. repairs, the, right? The, wi- the, the light and the wire and right. holy crap, that's not the wire. And, right. Yeah. So I fixed the electrical issue, at least the at least the one that was the the problem at the time was the, you know, that the hatchback uh, wiring needed to be repaired. So I fixed that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I thought, OK, awesome. Like I did. A, I did a thing. I fixed the Jeep. We're ready to go. We drive down the road and uh, start spilling uh, coolant all over the place, and the engine overheats. So it's like, well, shit. So we thought we had figured out the problem. We thought it was in the thermostat housing. We thought that's where it was coming from. So we pulled that off. So we pulled that off, uh, cleaned it up. I replaced the gasket. I replaced the thermostat. We we got it ready to go. Awesome. Okay. Cool. We are in business. Uh, no, we took it for a test drive. Engine overheats, cooling all over the ground. Shit. So now we think it's the water pump. So I've been spending this week taking off all of the engine components to get to the water pump, and um, I got my ass kicked last night by a hose that I cannot get off of the. Uh, the water pump. Anyway, the the biggest problem that I've got going on with it is that it's incredibly dry here, and my hands are particularly susceptible to to dryness, right? So like my my hands uh, are really chalky all the time because mm-hmm. yeah. uh, you know, so, I, and so I apply, they're getting all ripped up. Yes, you so got I nice, nice knuckle busted there too. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so the video viewers can see this this real nice uh, busted knuckle here. Um, that was that was me last night. Uh, you, you, not doing anything crazy, just like removing bolts from parts and stuff like that. And every time my hand would touch a metal component, like skin would literally just rip off of my hand, and uh, I it wasn't particularly painful. But I would look down, and my wrench was – I mean, when did I get a red wrench? Like, these are supposed to be chrome-colored. And, uh, <laughs> oh, shit, I'm bleeding heavily from my hand. What yeah, the hell's going good. on? That's not good at all. Um, so this is this is a problem of getting laid regularly, which I'm now assuming you are because of the, <laughs> the conflict between you and your son. You're probably – Probably having that little kind of conquest that uh, that contest there, um, and you're not using your Jergens enough anymore. So oh you my! To, you gosh. need to remember to lotion up. Even oh, I'm not like, out. where is this going? Okay, now I understand. Yeah, that, that's the problem. Got it. Okay, yeah, I uh, conveniently forgot about that uh, aspect of our show from a couple of weeks ago. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> I, I wasn't reminding you. I was reminding <laughs> the audience. Of course, you were. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Richard! Glad to have you back on the show, man. Uh, besides, yeah, awesome. besides hanging out with Amos and uh, attending a Talking Feds event, what what have you had going on lately? That's really all you need. But I mean, if you want to elaborate, <laughs> so wow, that, that's all that matters in my life is my buddy Anthony is here to hang out for the week. That's all I care about. So. Um, this is not geeky stuff. This is just like, what have I been doing? Uh, go with it wherever you want to go with it. He said explore. Okay. Well, so, I mean, this, this week is, so I'm actually kind of, um, for lack of a better way of putting it between contract jobs right now. And I'm on contract, but I technically, but I don't have an assignment. So every week I just kind of touch base with the company and say, hey, uh, is that job ready for me to start yet? And they're like, um, yeah, no, we still don't have signatures. 
So I've been kind of spending a lot of my time focusing on the blog at the Digital Media Zone and working more on the podcasts that I do. And I have, I don't know if you know this, you know, I got rid of, well, that's the wrong way of putting it, right? We finished one podcast. Yes. <laughs> got rid of. Yeah. Let's talk about Thrones. But what that means is it freed up some of my time. We were supposed to record an episode of Let's Talk About Anything Other Than Thrones. Yeah, it's just, this, this, that this didn't week out. just got away from us. Yeah. But I took on another podcast. I actually, with a, a buddy of mine, Adam Justice, he and I inherited a show called The Smart Home Show hmm. that was previously started by an industry analyst who was kind of really connected in the smart home space and talked about, you know, all, all the industry impacts that were going on. And he eventually ended up moving into other stuff and let the show just kind of fade. And we wanted to do a show together. And we said, hey, maybe we could take over his show. So we're now running that show in addition to my own podcast, Home On, and Entertainment 2.0 that I do with the DMC. So it's been busy times, and I've been spending a lot of time just kind of getting that up and running, working on the website for that, and stuff like that. So so your show, Home On, is about home automation, right? Smart home it tech. Is. tech. Uh, what would you say is the biggest difference between the smart home show and, and Home On? That is the logical question, isn't it, right? Like, why would you be doing two shows with the same general context? So my show, is Home On, is specifically about DIY home automation. And we have a very specific format where we have a guest co-host and we talk about the news of products that you can go out and buy yourself and install yourself. And then the guest talks with me about either stuff that's going on with them or their company or their product or what have you. And it's all geared toward like the weekend warrior DIY amateur electrician kind of person. Mm -hmm. The smart home show is geared more toward what's going on in the industry. So what's really cool about Adam and me hosting it is that he is in the industry. He runs a smart home product and services company. Mm. So he brings to the table the perspective of what's going, like what do these things mean for companies that are in this space? And I bring to the perspective the consumer view of things. What does this mean for <clears throat> consumers? And why would I care about this? And that might be, in some cases, completely diametrically opposed from the interests of the company. So we've had a couple episodes where we've started to see those differences, but I'm really looking forward to getting into stuff where we see a little bit of tension between what do companies want versus what do customers want. That sounds fascinating. I'm going to have to check out some episodes of that. That's And that's called The Smart Home Show. The Smart Home Show, yep. And iTunes and the usual places. Though not in Google yet for some reason. I have to figure out why it is. Um. Uh all right. Um, yeah. So check out the Smart Home Show on your podcatcher of choice. Has anybody and been by the way, if oh. we're talking about geeky stuff, that wasn't even my geeky thing of the week. So I still hope we're going to be talking about geeky things of the week. Uh, I'll, I'll go with my geeky thing of the week real quick. Okay. My geeky thing of the week happened the day I arrived here, and I took a tour of Richard's house. <laughs> and I will okay. tell you. I've never seen a, a house as automated in real life as this house. <laughs> like, you've got movie houses that might have more bells and whistles. He's got motion sensors on all the doors. He's got an alarm for when his mail arrives, like the mailbox mail. Um, every room has some sort of voice-activated assistant. They're all tied in. He's got a, a voice-activated microwave that I couldn't figure out yesterday, so when I warmed up my, my mac and cheese, I just did it the old manual way. Um... <laughs> It's, Which still works. It, it did. It, it worked worked fine. Uh, better than old bitch did, because she just kept telling me I didn't know what I was talking about. Which <laughs> old is bitch. accurate. It's accurate. Um, 
And the way his house is set up is phenomenal. He's got like this, this attic space where he can actually access all the wiring in the house. So I, I wouldn't, if he was talking about how to repair walls after installing some smart home shit, I wouldn't trust him. But if he's talking about the smart home shit itself, this is the dude. He's got all the gadgets and gadgets. <laughs> the yeah, gadgets and the gadgets. Walls. Wow. Yeah, you, you could be anywhere in this house and say uh, uh, Amazon's uh, voice service name, mm. and at least two, more likely three, maybe four devices <laughs> will respond and be like, what's up? That's... Yeah, and I also have some Google guys around here, too. So. Well, yeah, but they're not as prominent, so I haven't, you know. But right. yeah, there, there's it's it's kind of crazy that all the... All the lights in the house, like, are, are either motion sensitive or time sensitive to change temperature and color. And uh, of course, we, that's one of the things me and Richard have in common is, is OCD about me, color. Wait, temperature. Wait, speaking of OCD, Richard, uh, how about that? Me and Richard. Yeah, I, I was gonna let that fly. It did. It did. Like, I felt it in my stomach a little bit when he said it, though. <laughs> um, yeah, Amos. What Richard is not saying is <laughs> he, it should have been he's Richard. He's third our... beer. I'm good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah this is uh you because you, you know you know people that um for, for example there's always these times when everybody's harassing me about not knowing how to do audio because i'm always messing with it always trying to improve it always trying to change it trying to try to fix it make it whatever and if i didn't know how to do audio this week would have been a mess but i think richard can can say yeah the dude knows how to how to wire some shit up he may goof off too much but he was how to wire some shit up. And now I can say the dude knows his smart home shit. Like he's <laughs> he's, he's oh. way, way more into it. And he, I, I, I couldn't even touch the surface of all the shit that he has in his house. It's amazing. So, so the guy that runs two uh, automated home podcasts actually knows his stuff about automated home technology. That's probably a good thing, right? Yeah, I would hope it's, so. It's yeah. new. It's not common. <laughs> No, this makes me this makes me very happy because this is this is what I would expect upon entering Richard's house. Like this is if I was to picture walking into Richard's house, yeah, I'd be greeted by robots and cameras all around and voice activated every freaking thing. So that's uh no, thank no, you for, 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 I'll, for I'll get to confirming that. my I'll get to uh, that. He as much automation is in this house, he still has an old school alarm. Oh. If you fart in the wrong direction, make a noise, open a door, whatever else, his two dogs will come barking at you and howling. <laughs> That's amazing. He's still got an old school alarm. He might even have the fanciest alarm ever, but it doesn't. He doesn't need to worry about it because he's got the old school double alarm. Mm -hmm. So, so with, he, there's still a touch of classic in the high tech. <laughs> so Richard, with all of that that geekiness going on you said that's that doesn't even touch your geeky thing of the week. What what did you do this week that was so damn geeky? Yeah, my, my geeky thing of the week is that uh, one of the things that I do at the Digital Media Zone is review products, and I received our review unit of the HD Home Run Scribe Quattro. Now, most people, at least most people that I, I know, are probably going to say, what the hell are you talking about? You read my mind. The HD Home Run Scribe Quattro is an all-in-one over-the-air DVR server that you connect to your network and you connect to an over-the-air antenna and then you use apps on pretty much any device you have to watch live TV or record live TV or watch buffered TV from over-the-air. Oh, and by the way, the same company makes or made, they don't anymore, but they made a tuner for cable. So if you have cable, then it's going to show up there too, and you can just watch your cable TV channels and record them. It's really freaking cool, and it's about as, well, I don't know. I mean, how much, how, how big do you think that, you hmm. know, an all-in-one DVR with with four tuners and, and storage for like 300 hours of, uh, of content, how, how big do you think that that might be? Uh, like like storage capacity wise? No, how big do you think the Physics. box? Oh, the is box. I, yeah. I'm I'm mm, I'm I'm guessing that we're we're talking about the same size of an uh like an Apple TV or something. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna give him a clue. Hmm. I have installed in my house the HD Home Run Quattro, not the Servo Servio or the Scribe rather, just the Quattro. 
it doesn't have the DVR functionality. Yeah, it's just like the, it, the it streams antenna it, yeah. network connection. Yeah, it, it connects my, my HD antenna to my network, and it gets recorded into my Plex. Okay. So that that device is about the size of a a fancy deck of cards. Yeah. Okay. So it's like it's like you know a deck of cards, but it's got like a little case on it. You know, it's a little little thicker, a little taller. Yeah. It's about that. This this one is about one coaster thicker than that. It's so it's, about about half the size of an Apple TV. A modern Apple TV. Uh, oh wow. Apple TV four. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, kind it's of very crazy compact. Crazy how small this thing is. Mm. And he's been watching it. and I've been watching this, the video while he's watching. It's it's perfect. Yeah, it's absolutely perfect. It's yeah, it's physically perfect. It's great. That's fantastic. And what price range is this in? That's a really good question. I don't know if we know. I should know this. I don't know that I, I mean, know this. Th- this is so, this is a, a product that's available on the market now, or is this something is. that's uh, it, okay? It, you you can order it on their website. It is. I think it starts at about 150 if I remember correctly. Which and is then, needless because the Quattro starts at like 99. Right. I mean, it's not that, it's not significantly more expensive. Right. It, what I can tell you is, it, you know, you may remember that the folks at Amazon came out with a similar product. It's an over-the-air DVR product. Mm. It's a much bigger box. Yeah. And it's, it's more expensive. So it is it is cheaper than Amazon's similar offering yeah and uh by the way welcome to the ritual misery review show right yeah, I didn't mean it to be that, but, uh, but that was my geeky thing of the week yeah excellent and well Ken, what was your geeky thing of the week i i have obs to do this podcast yeah. <laughs> which no, is never fun i mean I, I, OBS, it's I, a pain in the ass i dedicated you. about five minutes to obs so i'm not going to use that i'm going to dedicate or I'm going to I'm going to use what I dedicated about 2 hours and some change to this week and that was Spider-Man Far From Home. Oh, and how was it? <laughs> it was it's the latest in the MCU. This is like the 23rd, I think, MCU film. You are not allowed to spoil because nope. I have not yet seen I'm not going to spoil game. anything. Oh, you haven't seen Endgame yet. Richard is not. Richard in fact, we were, we were supposed to reach out to Tom to see if uh, the, the Cord Killer audience has granted us permission for me to see. You need to do that because that would be a cool thing to do tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, in, so definitely, Richard, definitely, definitely do not go to Far From Home until you see Endgame. Because right, right. Far From Home is basically nothing but an Endgame spoiler. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I, I am aware of that. Yeah, so, and, and don't watch yeah. trailers for, for Far From Home. Um but no, it was it was great. I I will say this: if if you are an MCU fan, you will like this. If you liked Spider Man Homecoming, you're this is you're gonna love this. Like it's it's great. Tom Holland is the perfect Spider Man. Uh, he is so good. He, he is, is wonderful. So good. Yes, and and like Zendaya as MJ is spot on. Um, Love her too. Yeah, so great. And and the villain in, the, in she's this. She's got a lot of flack about shit. And I don't understand that. She's amazing. Uh, well, seriously, I, like all the way back from like Disney Channel, or whatever. She was getting a bunch of slack about stuff there. And then she kind of branched off. I don't know why. I think she's great. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, th- I think she's. Yeah. I think she's wonderful. She's just. She's just great. Full of energy. She's. She's wonderful. And she's wonderful in that. In that role. And just the ensemble cast of this movie was great. I've got nothing but but wonderful things to say about it. And uh, to avoid spoilers, I'm not going to mention anything I liked about the plot in particular. Uh, the storytelling was great. The visuals were wonderful. Um, yeah, it's great. Hey, Ken, Ken, I got an idea. Let's hear what Big Voice J has to say about this. Yeah, let's see if, if I fixed my uh, Skype input too so here we go welcome to him with me draft minute presented by diamond club not tv for the week of july 8th 2019 i'm your host big voice jay so i got kicked out of karaoke last night for singing danger zone six times in a row something about too many logins attempts let's go to the scoreboard Team Game Night's in last place with $210.3 million. Team Divide Squad's in fifth place with $322.4 million. Team Drunk Kids Gaming's in fourth place with $366.2 million. Team Retro Misery gets $211 million.
million from Spider-Man Far From Home. And second place with $807.8 million. And in first place with $1,244.2 it's Team Movie Party. That's your stream team movie draft minute. All told is our record as of July 10th, 2019. See, we we have we have a little hint. We we're actually in first place because billion. That's not even a real number, <laughs> right? Um, that is crazy. No. That is absolutely crazy. Hey, I have a question. Yeah. What's with the what's with the new horn background music on that thing? Uh, he changes it each week. So that well, that was a weird choice. We uh, you know we <laughs> Kent and I decided long ago we are not in the position to question Big Voice Jay's I, musical choices. I, I, right. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> If, if he's feeling a little porn that week, yeah. <laughs> who are we to, who are we to criticize him? <laughs> right. So so we did it, Amos. We are in second place. Uh, Spider Man. We're practically locked. We're yeah. practically oh, locked for second dude, place. It's over. There's no I, way we're getting first. No. And but... <laughs> we're we are going to get second place. Like I think that is one hundred percent a lock. I think I think the, the the placements are set right now with the possible exception. Of DKG overtaking, uh, have a drink. Um, but even then, it won't be by very much. It'll they'll have to right. creep past them. Yeah, it's going to be a yeah. good horse race for fourth place, or, or for uh, third place, I think. Yeah. Um, but movie party is going to win. We're going to be in the second place. Um, uh, Willie in the chat uh, is going to unfortunately come in last place with game night. Um, yeah. But I, I, you know. A, yeah, it, it's basically over, man. There's only a few movies left to come out, and um, I think we're pretty much locked in. And what's the end of the window for this? So it's, it's four weeks after it comes out. It comes out like the yeah, the, uh, well, it too rather. There's there's only out. three movies left to come out, and they're spaced very far out. Lion King comes yeah. out next weekend. Okay. Then uh, Hobbs and Shaw, the uh, the the Fast and Furious presents movie yeah. Yeah. that comes out August second. And then it chapter two comes out September sixth, so pretty big yeah. uh, gap there. And our first place team so it'll be has until, like, it mid chapter October two. or early October. Early, early October. October. Okay, it's four yeah. weeks after the release of the, of the last movie. Right. All right. Yep. Yep. So, uh, and and who has Lion King? Because I'm hearing good things. DKG. About that. Yeah, that will do well. Yep. DKG, DKG has that, it, which is why up to third, right? Exactly. Well, yeah. um, so, yeah. Yep. Maybe. Maybe. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah, I, I watched. Uh, well, I kind of forced list Richard to listen, but I watched the uh, the women's national team win the the twenty nineteen World Cup. Oh, okay. On Sunday, and that was amazing. So I just want to throw that up, throw, throw that up there. Actually, yeah. all I really heard was him yelling pretty frequently. <laughs> right. Welcome to soccer. Uh, yeah. So, so can, yeah, congratulations to the U.S. women for that victory. Uh, it's two years in a row. Uh, no, it's two tournaments in a row. Or two, well, that, okay, apart. yeah, yeah, yeah. That come on, dude, exactly. Get your math right. <laughs> two in a row, but total of four now, right? Total of four total. out of a total. There's only been nine. The U.S. women's national team has won four and has never placed worse than fourth, and they've only done that once. Every other time has been third, second, or you know the four wins. Hmm. And how much are they making? Never know. We, we won't go ahead and yeah. Uh, that's... <laughs> So, hey, Amos, speaking of winners, uh, there's mm. this guy, DJ Fission. I think he... DJ Fission. Yeah, I think he's a winner. Sounds familiar. Where where could I... Richard, where could I have heard the name DJ Fission before? I have no fucking clue. Uh, <laughs> it's, you know it's, why? It's, you know why? Because you're not a patron of Ritual Misery. Oh! Burn. DJ Damn. Fission is one of our favorite people because he is, in fact, a patron of this very show over at patreon.com slash ritual misery amos why would dj fission even want to be a patron oh well because he gets a bunch of extra shit that's that's really what it comes down to and 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 he also by donating as little as a buck he shows that he gives a fuck and that is just bringing us up on our luck because we are just too happy bucks cucks Cucks. (laughs) Cucks. where are you going with this where did ducks come from? <laughs> well, because it already said fuck. So I was trying to find something else. And uh, no, fucks work. It just makes you shit after that. Oh, my God. And the extra, just so that you know, just to set your expectations properly, your extra this week, 
is us desperately trying to get the audio to work. Yes. <laughs> oh, Usually yes. It's better than that. Yes. So the yeah. patrons, the patrons over at patreon.com slash ritual misery can uh, expect to see uh, exclusive features like pre-show, post-show, exclusive interviews. Um, Amos, uh, a, a supposed audio engineer, trying to get audio to work. Oh, <laughs> um, oh another bird. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Uh, things are in the feed, but he's also a patron because he believes in our show and he wants to make ritual misery continue to improve and be able to do awesome things like travel to our own live events. Do we, we have live events? Let, yeah. We, yeah well, I, I think I've been in one. We, yeah. That is, oh. that is accurate. I'm supposed to bring you your damn live shirt and I keep forgetting and because when we I do bring it, you forget to take it home. And when I <laughs> when I come to you, I forget to bring it. <laughs> and because we are it's fucking t-shirts legendary, we see the frame now. And because and we didn't one, because do we are fully oh, okay, supported by Patreon. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, I, I was trying to help you out because you kept moving oh. over some shit. Right. Oh, Skype with the lag. Uh, that's right. So since we didn't do a live show this year, our live show next year should be awesome. And it's going to be fueled by the patrons over at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Uh, Amos. Still Richard. Are, are you going to be at, at South by? You're still trying to figure that out with Kathy, right? Oh, I totally plan on going. Yeah. Oh, and, and we, we went out to dinner with Kathy last night and we had a fucking blast. And uh, most of our audience trait. probably doesn't know who Kathy is. Just know they, well, she's a wonderful, online. awesome person. Or they need to listen to your back catalog because she's an she, Kathy yeah. Berry has been a guest. On your she show. has. She certainly has. It was like yeah. episode 100 and something. So, <laughs> And she is a friggin' blast. She's a friend of mine that yeah. I've known for years and years. And we actually had... A really cool dinner last night out on a, a a bar that's right on the river, so it was just kind of nice to hang out and chill a little bit. It, 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 the bar was supposed to be a holding spot until we got a table, and we decided to stay at the bar. And the longer we were at the bar, the fewer other people were coming into the bar, which made it even better. Yeah, and the music wasn't too loud, so it was kind of like we had our own bar at this restaurant on the nice. water. It was great. Yeah, yeah exclusivity. It, that's amazing. And if you check out Richard Gunther's Insta feed. Uh, you'll you'll see some pictures from there. That is true. That is true. And you'll be able to see Kathy Berry on there, and then follow her and see some more pictures. Yeah, and they and, might have tagged me, but you won't see shit from me because I don't insta. Well, since it, since it's in context, Richard, what is your Instagram uh, username? Uh, it's different for everything else because you know, shouldn't it be? I was late to Instagram. <laughs> actually, it is Richard W Gunther. Excellent. Um, everybody should go check that out. Um, you guys, I want you guys to check this out. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's game. Play with him. I do, in fact, have a game for you guys. Oh, dear. And <laughs> it is called Which Washington is Which? Uh, um. I'm I'm excited to see which one of us gets the D. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as you guys know, there is Washington D.C. and there's also Washington State. Not D.C. I am going to tell you the name of a building, and you're going to tell me, is it in D.C. or is it in the state? Now, is this a competition or a coopetition? No, it is a competition. Richard, heads or tails? Oh, you're totally going to win this. Uh, tails. You got tails. Would you like to go first or second? I would like to go first. Excellent. Okay. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Richard, is this building located in Washington, D.C. or Washington State? The Old Stone House. I'm going to say Washington State. Oh. It is in Washington, D.C. Amos, let's see mm -hmm. if you can do better. Oh, you know what? And I know exactly where it is, too. <laughs> in D.C. Now that I think about it. Yeah. I know it, yeah, but yeah. Mm, okay. 
All right, Amos, you got lucky because Richard obviously has the home court advantage for this quiz, mm-hmm. and he got the first half wrong. mile from there. Mm-hmm. I'm going to lose this one. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Amos, is this in D.C. or Washington State? Suzalo Library. Suzalo Library. Uh, I'm going to go with Washington State. It is, in fact, in Washington State. Uh, Richard, I, I have to know, Richard, how have you lived this long near D.C. with your OCD as bad as it is and these roads as fucked up as they are? Because <laughs> they are shit. Sometimes you have five roads converging in one place, but they don't line up right. So you've got like these little miniature blocks that are like two car widths long. I don't get it. You you are a passenger with me in my car, right? You right. witnessed my blood pressure going up as I was yelling at my environment, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> That's how. <laughs> Fair enough. What's the damn question, Kent? <laughs> All right, Richard. Richard, is this in Washington, D.C. or Washington State? Dumbarton House. I'm going to say Washington, D.C. That is correct, sir. Have you been to the Dumbarton House? I have not. What is the Dumbarton House? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> See, I, I would have I would have gone with with Washington D.C. because it starts with dumb. No, oh. no. I, the, there's a there. Dumbarton is a is a um, an area around here that I'm that I seem to remember when when I lived in the city. Mm. So somewhere it, around it, these parts, sense that there would be a Dumbarton house. <laughs> Amos, let's see if you can get this one. Washington, D.C. or Washington State? The Octagon Museum. The Octagon Museum. Washington State. Richard, have you ever been to the Octagon Museum? You know, I don't remember, but I swear I have because I remember... I remember the name, the Octagon Museum. Yeah, actually, yes. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Is now, it just like 433,000 different stop signs? Uh, <laughs> no. Well, no. If I recall correctly, it's it's actually a, an octagon-shaped brick building. That's what, It's not a museum it, of octagons. It's just no, a, it's not a museum of octagons. No. That's, it, that's is, it, it is an octagon-shaped museum. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Richard... Where is it's probably the... one of those little fucked up cross streets. <laughs> it's the only shape that would fit. Richard, where is the Museum of Pop Culture? Oh, this one I know. The Museum of Pop Culture? Mm-hmm. I, I I don't think that would be in D.C., so I'm going to say Washington State. It is one of the ugliest buildings ever, and it is in northern Seattle. Okay. Yeah, it... it... Yes, exactly right, Amos. Too bad it wasn't your turn, uh, because it is indeed located in Seattle. You didn't need to hear the applause of confirming his answer anyway. It's actually right next to the Space Needle. Like, you have this beautiful Space Needle, and then, like, a block over is this weird fucking shitty... I don't know that I would call the Space Needle beautiful. I think it is iconic. Fair enough. Hmm. Well, in in, in that token, so is the uh, Pop Culture Museum. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. All right, Amos, where <laughs> is the Olive Tower? The Olive Tower? Yes, like the Olive Garden, but this one's a tower. <laughs> Not like the Olive Garden. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's anything like the Olive Garden. I wanna, uh, so so uh, gaming the game, I'm going to go D.C. You say the Olive Tower is in D.C.? Sure. You overthought that one. I, I didn't really put much feeling. <laughs> I genuinely didn't know, so I figured I'd answer something. All right, Richard, how about Merchant's Cafe and Saloon? I, I'm going to wild ass guess that as DC. You say Merchant's Cafe and Saloon is in DC? I am so sorry. That is not true. Oh, okay. Amos, yeah, how about no, this one? No. The Willard mm-hmm. Hotel. The Willard, the Willard Hotel. The Willard Hotel. I'm going to say that's in D.C. Because they got all the fancy hotels. Richard, have you ever been there? I could have got that one right. Yeah, well, I mean, we should have just swapped those last two questions. With you today. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been there, Richard? Is it nice? Yes. It is beautiful. 
It's absolutely beautiful, and they have a wonderful restaurant there. Excellent. Okay. Uh, this one's for you, Richard. King Street Station. King Street Station. Not in D.C. There's, a, so, lot of, there's uh, a lot of stations in D.C. Like, this is... No, well, there's a King Street in the D.C. area, but not in D.C., so I'm going to say Washington State. Well played, sir. Well played. Amos, this is your yeah, chance to tie the game at three apiece. Tudor Place. Tudor Place. Oh, that's D.C. You guys had a combined score of 6 out of 10 for 60%. You guys got the D. We got the D. (laughs) (laughs) Keeping the D streak going. (laughs) It is is fantastic how the D just keeps rolling. That is so good. Can't get away from this D. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, well played, guys. Well played. Oh, oh my gosh. That's right. Holy crap. So, uh, Kent, um, usually this is the part of the show where we will have a TED Talk if we want one, but we always we haven't done those in a while because... Yeah, I was going to say, holy cow. We haven't I mean, done that in like 100 episodes or something. Ball. What a bunch of crap. You, you, I thought you retired that segment, no? No, we just get tired of watching 15 TED Talks to find one that we really wanted to talk about. Fair. Yeah, I would you, say you it's retired. harder to understand and harder to find the really entertaining ones. So you had the ones that would make you laugh, the ones that would make you smart, and then the, all these other ones in the middle that are either too smart for us <laughs> or didn't make us laugh hard enough. Okay. That's what it really came down yeah. to. So we're giving it a break for a while, putting on a hiatus. Mm-hmm. So we can come back after a year. There's been a couple more TED conferences, and we can kind of get some of the newer stuff, and mm-hmm. maybe we'll be smarter enough for that by then. Okay. Sure. But I- distracted you you were going to ask him something oh well, usually we have a main topic but our main topic tonight was supposed to be my time here in dc but we've kind of already talked about that so amos this is your well, second time visiting washington dc is that correct yes it is so so Twice this in the same year so this time so last time you you visited some of the uh the, the sites right like you went to some mm-hmm. memorials and some some monuments and uh, I, I did all the all the national park stuff Right, so, so the National Mall stuff. Right? Have you visited any of those iconic sites or any other iconic sites this time that you didn't get a chance to see last time? Uh, Georgetown? Was it Georgetown University Law Center? It's not in Georgetown. But isn't that the name of the... Of the... Yes. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, um, which, uh, so one thing that I've realized, because most of the time here I've been driving, last time I was here, is was, was either doing a... Uh, a uh, lift or a, a lime scooter or riding the uh, riding the the the, the subway. Mm-hmm. Um, the subway is the best way to get around the city for sure. Unless you have someone driving you. Uh, okay. Depending and on they, time of day, I would say. And, and they can move around the heavy traffic times. <laughs> right. Right. Um. Every time I was on the street and I thought I knew where I was, I would look over and I, I'd see the Capitol, or I'd see the um. Well, the Capitol building, or I would see uh, the White House, or, you know, like, you, I don't want to say it's hard to get lost in the city, but kind of every road either goes towards or away from one of the major things of the city, so. Sure. um, But I haven't actually done any touristy stuff at all, which I'm glad I got all that done last time, because this time we've just been working. It's just every day, so. um, but I have gotten to see a lot of the other areas of the city because every time you drive in, you go a different route because the uh, it's a it's like a a, a routing lottery. You don't know if this route's going to get you there any faster, but you're going to try it because the other route certainly wasn't going to get you there any right. faster. So right. I've seen a lot of the outskirts of the town, and it's been really really cool. The the city the, so the roadways of Washington D.C. have always been kind of interesting to me. It's it's cool to look at it on the map. It really sucks to drive it. Uh, mm. It's it's kind of like a wagon wheel, right? Where all these these roads go like in a circular path around the city, but they're all like interrupted by like a landmass, just just kind of like an island in the middle of the roadway. And that's that's uh. That's so it. first of all, the 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 roads were designed for uh, like horse and carriage travel, not for cars. And well, then, the city also wasn't designed for people to live in. 
Right. So like it was the kind of was never supposed to be a residential area. It was supposed to be governmental and yeah, and you know, it's basically a fortress, right? Like like there's plenty of places that like a lot of the the little like little grass islands were for like cannon emplacements and and things like that for like city defense, uh, capital defense well, type stuff. I tell you what, the 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 street structure and the one way streets and all the construction makes for an adequate defense against cars. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> holy shit. Yeah, it, it is challenging. It's funny you <clears throat> mentioned about the uh, the infrastructure for carriages and stuff. I mean, one of the roads that we drove on yesterday to get out of the city still has remnants of the original uh, brick uh, street that was there at one point in time. Yeah. And at the time... It was a brick street. So this is how things go in D.C. pretty much. It was a brick street that had a trolley that went down the middle of the street. And then, like most cities in their infinite wisdom, they tore up all the tracks that were in the city and left then a brick street that had now macadam in the holes that were once the tracks. And then about... 10 years ago, they decided, you know what, that trolley thing, that was actually a really good idea. We should put that in <laughs> again. So they ripped out the street again and now put tracks down. So, you know, every once in a while, I don't know. Old is new again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Cities might not make the best decisions, you know? So as congested as the traffic is in D.C., and um, at, as uh, non-standard as the roads tend to be, do you get better at at navigating the streets, Richard? Like, is it a um, is it a, a skill acquired over time uh, driving through D.C.? So I, I honestly think that it, it was when I lived there. Like, I have not lived in the city for about six years now, and I haven't driven around downtown proper or the D.C immediate vicinity regularly, like daily, for years and years and years. And when I first moved down to the area, uh, well, many years ago, let's just say that, many years ago, I would actually just go around driving around trying to figure out where these fucking highways and shit went because, <laughs> like, you could... There are times that you can get on a road, but you can't get off, or you can get off, but you can't get back on, mm. or... Or there's like one way streets, so you figure, oh, I'll go to the next street. Nope, that's one way the same way. And you it's just like it's just absolutely crazy trying to figure out how to get around town. And then you figure, oh, well, I understand the street structure. The streets are lettered from A to Z, so no problem. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, K, L, and what? <laughs> like what? Right. what I don't understand what the fuck just happened. Yeah. So yeah, I mean <clears throat> oh, and then there's all these diagonals, and well, how are you going to intersect diagonal roads with regular roads? Oh, I know. Let's add circles in the middle of the city. That will help with traffic. Yeah, it's it's a mess, and I, I think you do get better over time. But I personally, I feel like I've lost that skill because I've been out of it mm. for so long. I, again, traffic circles are a great thing for everywhere except America. Yeah, I, people in America don't know how to drive on them. Also, in America... We tend to believe that you should augment the flow of traffic in a traffic circle and introduce a very unnatural phenomenon to traffic circles, which is traffic lights. Uh, right. Yes. Yeah. Which makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, and this I... is why we can't figure this shit out because we keep or <laughs> or or lanes uh, with like purpose lanes. In the traffic circle, so this lane can only go here and go there. If you go into this lane, you have to go all the way around. <laughs> right, right, like, right. It's, yeah. Um, and my favorite thing about the city, and I mentioned this just a few minutes ago, but where this where the streets converge, sometimes the line continues to go with the street, even though it doesn't make any plausible sense for that road. <laughs> so you end up with the traffic light on a block that is less than one car long. <laughs> okay. All right. Like just just stopping at a traffic light, doing a legal stop at a traffic light in a small car, and you're blocking traffic behind you, and you're the only car on that fucking block. 
And again, it's because we of saw the that just diagonal yesterday. roads. Yeah, we saw that. It, it, it'll be like a convergence of like five different diagonal roads. And then, oh, by the way, you've got a parking garage on both sides. And neither one of those parking garages are convenient for any of those streets to get to or yeah. out of. So, Amos, it's, let me let me ask you this. So, so it's easy to pick out things that are annoying or seemingly out of place. Tell me something about D.C. that would surprise somebody that's never been there. Uh, I don't think driving towards the Capitol building ever gets old. Oh, uh, it's 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 pretty phenomenal. It's impressive. Yep. It's because you can see it forever away. Because mm-hmm. this this roads are straight, right, and there's nothing really obstructing. So you're like two miles away, and you're driving towards the Capitol. You can see it down there, and as you get closer, it just becomes more pleasant or ominous, I guess, depending on how you view the government. Well, and yeah, what mood you're in. And there are essentially three largely unobstructed avenues streets that where you or three avenues where you have a largely unobstructed view yeah. approaching the capital and it i it is just really impressive it is stunning regardless of what you think of the government and how it works or doesn't work or and yeah. you have to just kind of appreciate that wow that's the center that is the that's the center point of the seat of our government yeah um, and I would also say the the architecture out here. Some of the new stuff is is pretty wild and pretty crazy. And if you're into new architecture, it's really cool. But a lot of these buildings have been gutted and redone inside a dozen or so times in the last 200 years or whatever. But the outsides remain fairly much the same, and it's beautiful. Mm. Some of the architecture is just breathtaking. That it's been around that long, and you can tell it's been around that long because you can see how it's been bricked up and bricked down and, and you know, and it's, it, it's really cool. And a lot of times they, they'll take the, uh, the classic architecture and then put like the new architecture on the sides of it to where it's like this meld of different architectures. So like and, the facade is, uh, it goes through different styles. Well, more like the facade remains the same and the, the rest of the structure kind of goes through, uh, okay. renovations. Um, but either way, if you're into architecture, this town is is amazing for you. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah it, it it absolutely is. And, and the classical architecture of the old granite buildings and their and their I, I believe the style is neoclassical, if I'm remembering correctly, yeah. uh, <clears throat> it is just absolutely beautiful. And even the newer buildings, like the Reagan Building, they've tried to design in a fashion that still adheres to the architectural ethos of the city. Yeah, and then some of the monuments and the, the synergy between them, like if you're at the Vietnam Wall, the Vietnam Memorial Wall, okay, the wall is actually split into two pieces. One is a little bit longer than the other. Um, they both aim towards another monument. So the longer edge of the wall aims straight towards the Washington Monument, mm. uh, which is the big obelisk in the middle of the National Mall. And the other one aims directly back towards the Lincoln Memorial. And the, I believe the, the lengths of the walls are, I, I might be wrong on this, but I think the length of the wall is uh, um, uh, representative of the distance to those monuments from that place. That wouldn't surprise me at all. But, yeah, but it's, it's, it was designed very <clears throat> carefully and very purposefully all the basically all the national mall the monuments around it are amazing the other thing that's really cool about that is because of the angle of that in the right light the reflection of those monuments that they point to is yep. really really cool yeah and the the walls will reflect upon each other at certain times of day too so where you can look at one wall and see the reflection of it because it's it's like solid granite it's like this dark granite mm-hmm. and all the names are inlaid in there and yeah, it's 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 really ridiculous. And then like the uh, if you've been to the the Martin Luther King uh, uh, Park or monument or whatever it's called over there, I still have not seen that. You have to see it at night. It is it's kind of stupid because the way that it's lit up and wow, they've got all these posts that are lit up from underneath them and it glows. That's really cool. And I've got pictures. It's fucking phenomenal. Well, it's kind of like I was telling. Like, I'm you. getting chills thinking about it. Right? I, was, I went there with Rick and and it was just one of those things that. Her us being a, a mixed race couple, yeah, standing there, that it was, yeah, uh, it was like a special cool. moment for us. That's really, that really cool. cool. That's really cool. Wow. Um, <clears throat> that that same nighttime thing where where the monument is a different experience than night than it is in the day. 
that that's also very true of the Korean the Korean War yes. Memorial that I had talked yeah told you that you had to go see because you go and you see it during the day and it's no big deal you go there at night, <clears> especially if you're not expecting it like if you visited night the first time you don't see all these these statues of soldiers going through this like slightly wooded area this garden until you hit one angle and all of a sudden it's all lit up and oh, you wow. can just see the shadows of them and it's creepy as fuck. It's really I, I, really cool. I did visit the Korean War Memorial uh, when I was in D.C., and, but it was daytime. It was like late afternoon. Uh, yeah. That I just now got a chill up my spine yeah. imagining that at dusk or slightly after dusk. That sounds yeah. amazing. That and the, really the fact cool. that they're open 24, unless there's construction or a special thing going on, like you can visit them at all times. And some of them are really nothing more than... than uh, uh, what are the, 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 the rotunda or whatever, the little round things mm-hmm. that are lit up, and you don't even really see what it's for until you start looking at the granite, and it's got names in laid in there. It's, mm-hmm. There's like not a title on the damn thing, <laughs> but you have to once you see the names you recognize, you're like, oh shit, that's what this is here for. And it's I, like if you're a history buff at all, Washington D.C. is just stupid cool. I think yeah. I told you guys this before, but when I was younger and lived downtown and could kind of walk around everywhere. My favorite thinking spot in the middle of the friggin' mm-hmm. night mm-hmm. was the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. You said on the backside, right? Yeah. Yeah, because there's, there's no traffic looks, back there. It, and it looks over at Arlington Cemetery. Yeah, mm-hmm. right across the river. Right. Yeah, it, <clears throat> and, and that's another thing. Arlington Cemetery, like, even if you're not into cemeteries, you have to visit that place. So it's, it's a very solemn experience. Right. Yeah. Richard, it's, I had... I, Richard, I have one final question for you. Okay. Uh, living in the D.C. area for as long as you have, what is one place that you won't find on a travel website or in any of the brochures Ooh. kind of a hidden D.C. gem that you would recommend <coughs> to somebody who wants to get that non-touristy little something extra? Wow. wow. Other than your house that overlooks the river. I, well, <laughs> well, but, so yeah, Richard's no. going to start charging admission to his house. I, you could. Yeah. <laughs> he, he let me crash here for the week for free. And I'm just like, oh, my God. I, I, you know, I, I bought dinner last night. And I was just like, oh, okay, well, that pays for like two hours of my time. Oh, good guy. Come on. Man. Let's <laughs> So, uh, yeah, wow. what's the hidden gem in D.C.? That's hard. Because it's so traveled, or because there's so many, or because you're so familiar? Just because there's so much stuff there. It's, I mean, it, it's it's crazy how much is downtown. One of the things that I loved, and I, I don't know if everybody would appreciate this, but you know how a lot of cities all have, well, not all, but many cities have a central park or green space mm-hmm. that is kind of part of mm-hmm. the the city itself. <clears throat> Excuse me, and DC is no exception. There is a, an enormous swath of land in DC uh, called Rock Creek Park. And okay. Rock Creek Park, I had the, that's actually where the stone house is. And I had the uh, fortune of living four blocks away from the end one of the entrances to Rock Creek Park. So you can go down into this park and very much like if you're deep enough into Central Park, just have no friggin' clue that you are anywhere near all of the hustle and craziness of the city. Mm-hmm. Because you just have all of this uh just this the green and you know, all of the typical stuff that you would have in parks, like ballparks. And so, so it's like a D.C. version of Central Park. And everything. Yeah, but in, in, it's a much different format. Right. It's, it, it, it's um, a little more natural. It's it's much more natural. And it doesn't have, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to call it contrived or anything, but it, it doesn't have things like, okay, and here's the Japanese garden, and here's uh, the big fountain, and... It's it's all really much more naturally built around Rock Creek and uh, some of the original old kind of national 
uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? The National Park Service mm -hmm. properties that are still maintained in the center of the city. So it's cool stuff. And, and if you just kind of want to get away from it while you're in the city and you're sick and tired of driving in the heinously ridiculous, stupid traffic, it's a good way to do it. And there's a road in the down the, the middle of the park that will actually get you from way up north of the city to right downtown. Mm. And most people don't even know about that. Oh, wow. Nice. Excellent. Well, we will now that you talked about on this immensely popular podcast. That's true. Now I spoiled it, and it's going to be ruined for the whole city. That, for the whole city forever. Richard, could we possibly find pictures of that on your Instagram? Probably not, because did I tell you that I got to Instagram late? <laughs> oh, that's right. Remind us where where we would find you on Instagram. <clears throat> yeah, that would be at Richard W. Gunther, which is not where you would find me on Twitter. Ah. That would be at just plain old Richard Gunther. So at just at Richard plain Gunther. old. Well, Wait, what? Yeah, at, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not at just plain old Richard oh, Gunther. Oh, sorry. At Richard Gunther. Yeah, just plain old Richard Gunther. <laughs> right. All right, so That's Twitter. For Twitter so handling. Twitter Richard at Richard Gunther. Gunther the, uh, Instagram at Richard W. Gunther. It, it'd be uh, yes. at JPORG. Got it. You have to initial it out? What? Oh, yeah. I, I, I took, yeah, if you just playing old R G J P O R G. Just yeah, play old other. At G Port. Anyway, I'm not that. Just, yeah, don't go there. That's your new alias. Don't that. go there. It's probably, it's probably like form standards. All right. right. <laughs> if that's not confusing, Amos, <laughs> tell us where you are on the internet. <laughs> you can find me on a Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. Ah, and, and, and on Instagram there, too? I think it's Ethan Kane. It might be Ethan I think, Kane 77. I think it is Ethan Kane. Kane. Uh, I don't know. I think it is. It's Ethan Kane. I only have two aliases online. It's Ethan Kane or Ethan Kane 77. Hey, let me tell you what your Instagram account is. It's yeah. Ethan Kane. How would you spell that? <laughs> <laughs> let me guess. E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. -E. Yeah. No, no, it's E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I. Any. Oh, uh, I, I hear the difference. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I only have two aliases on the internet. It's either Del Noche or Del Noche 77. Unless or... we're talking about Twitter. <laughs> then it's RM underscore Del Noche <laughs> because I was late to Twitter. <laughs> See? <laughs> Um, I need you to unfuck your aliases. <laughs> well, yeah, I need some you, people to like pass like, them on. You have like fifteen aliases on Twitter. Yeah, but you don't need to know them. You don't need to know any of them. They're yeah. all aggregated at Richard Gunther. Amazing. Richard hey, Gunther. if you guys, if you guys want to follow the show on Twitter, it is at Ritual Misery. I encourage everyone to join the conversation over on Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. You can find all these links in more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m.-ish Pacific time on diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritualmisery. We want to thank Kevin McLeod very much for allowing us to use his music. Thank you for listening. For Amos, for me, for Richard, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See, it's not me. He can't even finish when he's doing it on his own time. You have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Man, that stuff all sounds so slow when you listen at normal speed. <laughs>